Please become a Patreon supporter to keep Pocket Bios commercial free and subscribe for more Pocket Bios. Nathaniel Green was born on August 7th, 1742 on Forge Farm at Potawatomi in the township of Warwick, Rhode Island, British America. He was the second son of a prosperous Quaker merchant and farmer. Due to religious beliefs, Green's father discouraged book learning as well as dancing and other activities. Nonetheless, Nathaniel convinced his father to hire a tutor, and he studied mathematics, the classics, law, and various works of the Age of Enlightenment. At some point during his childhood, Green gained a slight limp that would remain with him for the rest of his life. In 1770, Green moved to Coventry, Rhode Island to take charge of the family-owned foundry, and he built a house in Coventry called Spell Hall. Later in the year, Green and his brothers inherited the family business after their father's death. In July 1774, Green married the 19-year-old Catherine Littlefield. Green and Catherine's first child was born in 1776, and they had six more children between 1777 and 1786. After the French and Indian War ended, the British Parliament began imposing new policies designed to raise revenue from British North America. After British official William Dunnington seized a vessel owned by Green and his brothers, Green filed an unsuccessful lawsuit against Dunnington for damages. Green became increasingly alienated from the British government. In 1774, after the passage of the revenue-raising measures that colonials derided as the Intolerable Acts, Green helped organize a local militia known as the Kentish Guards. Because of his limp, Green was not selected as an officer of the militia. The American Revolutionary War broke out with the April 1775 Battles of Lexington and Concord. In early May, the legislature of Rhode Island established the Rhode Island Army of Observation and appointed Nathaniel Green to command it. The Second Continental Congress established the Continental Army and appointed George Washington to command all colonial forces. In addition to Washington, Congress appointed 16 generals and Green was appointed as a brigadier general in the Continental Army. The siege of Boston continued until March 1776 when British forces evacuated from the city. After the end of the siege, Green briefly served as the commander of the military forces in Boston, but he rejoined Washington's army in April 1776. General Washington established his headquarters in Manhattan, and Green was tasked with preparing for the invasion of nearby Long Island. While he focused on building up fortifications in Brooklyn, Green befriended General Henry Knox and struck up a correspondence with John Adams. He was also, along with several other individuals, promoted to Major General by an act of Congress. Because of a severe fever, he did not take part in the Battle of Long Island. During the withdrawal from Manhattan, Green saw combat for the first time in the Battle of Harlem Heights. After the Battle of Harlem Heights, Washington placed Green in command of the New Jersey Fort Constitution and the New York Fort Washington, giving him both sides of the Hudson River. Shortly after the Battle of Fort Washington, a British force under General Cornwallis captured Fort Constitution and the Continental Army began a retreat across New Jersey and into Pennsylvania. Green commanded part of Washington's army in the December 1776 Battle of Trenton and the January 1777 Battle of Princeton, both of which were victories for the Continental Army. In March 1778, Green reluctantly accepted the position of Quartermaster General, making him responsible for procuring supplies for the Continental Army. As Quartermaster General, Green continued to attend Washington's councils of war, an unusual arrangement for a staff officer. After France joined the war in early 1778, the British Army in Philadelphia was removed to New York. Along with Mad Anthony Wayne and the Marquise de Lafayette, Green recommanded an attack on the British force while it retreated across New Jersey to New York. Major General Green commanded the division in the subsequent Battle of Monmouth, which, after hours of fighting, ended in a draw. In July 1778, Washington granted Green temporary leave as Quartermaster General so that he could take part in an attack on British forces stationed in his home state of Rhode Island. Green fought in the subsequent Battle of Rhode Island, an inconclusive battle that ended with a British retreat from the American position. After the battle, the American force under General Sullivan left Rhode Island, while Green returned to his duties as Quartermaster General. By October 1780, the Continental Army had suffered devastating defeats in the South under the command of Benjamin Lincoln and Horatio Gates, leaving the states at a major disadvantage in the Southern theater of the war. On October 14, 1780, General Washington, acting on the authorization of Congress, appointed Major General Green as the commander of the Southern Department of the Continental Army. 
Green would face a 6,000-man British army led by General Cornwallis and cavalry commander Banashti Talathunk, as well as numerous loyalist militias that worked with the British. Green settled on a strategy of guerrilla warfare rather than pitched battles in order to prevent the advance of the British into North Carolina and Virginia. Among Green's key subordinates in the Southern Campaign were his second-in-command, Friedrich Wilhelm von Steuben, cavalry commander Henry Lee, the Marquis de Lafayette, Daniel Morgan, and Francis Marion. Upon arriving in Charlotte, North Carolina in December 1780, Green went against conventional military strategy by dividing his forces. In the January 1780 Battle of Cowpens, Morgan led Continental troops to a major victory that resulted in the near total destruction of Tarleton's forces. Green linked up with Morgan and retreated into North Carolina, purposely forcing Cornwallis away from British supply lines. On February 9th, Green decided to continue to retreat north, heading toward the Dan River at the North Carolina-Virginia border. Unwilling to travel even further from his supply lines, General Cornwallis led his army south to Hillsboro, North Carolina. On February 22nd, Green's force crossed back over the Dan River to challenge Cornwallis in North Carolina. After crossing back into North Carolina, Green harassed Cornwallis' army. In early March, he received reinforcements from North Carolina and Virginia doubling the size of his force to approximately 4,000 men. On March 14th, he led his army to Guilford Courthouse and began preparing for an attack by Cornwallis. After skirmishes on the morning of March 15th, the main British force launched a full attack in the afternoon, beginning the Battle of Guilford Courthouse. With his army's left flank collapsing, Green ordered a retreat, bringing the battle to an end. Although the Battle of Guilford Courthouse ended with an American retreat, the British suffered substantially greater losses. To Green's surprise, in late April, Cornwallis' force began a march north to Yorktown, Virginia. Rather than follow Cornwallis, Green headed south, where he challenged British Commander General Francis Roden for control of South Carolina and Georgia. On April 20th, he began a siege of Camden, South Carolina and established a camp at a nearby ridge known as Hobkirk's Hill. By the end of June, the British controlled little more than a thin strip of coastal land from Charleston to Savannah. After resting through much of July and August, the Continental Army resumed operations and engaged the British force on September 8th at the Battle of Utah Springs. The battle ended with a Continental retreat, but the British suffered more substantial losses. After the battle, the British force continued to Charleston, leaving interior South Carolina in full control of Continental forces. Nonetheless, the British still controlled New York City, New York, Savannah, Georgia, and Charleston, North Carolina, and Green still contended with loyalist militias who sought to destabilize Continental control. No major military action occurred in 1782, and the British evacuated Savannah, Georgia, and Charleston, North Carolina before the end of the year. Congress officially declared the end of the war on April 1783, and Green resigned his commission in late 1783. After resigning his commission, Nathaniel Green returned to Newport, Rhode Island. Facing a large amount of debt, he relocated to the South to focus on the plantations he had been awarded during the war, and he made his home at the Mulberry Grove Plantation outside of Savannah, Georgia. Green fell ill on June 12, 1786, and he died at Mulberry Grove on June 19, 1786, at the age of 43. For over a century, his remains were interred at the Graham Vault in Colonial Park, Colonial Park Cemetery in Savannah. On November 14, 1902, his, his remains were moved to a monument in Johnson Square, Savannah, Georgia.